right, this is Zach interview, final interview, take one. So what do you think about making a ski movie with no actual skiing in it? Because I think that's what this is about to be. I think it's f***ed. I think uh, I don't want to watch a ski film without any skiing. It sounds boring. I can't believe Zach would even tolerate this. This whole concept of wild abandon and living on the edge is getting harder for those of us who have that as an ideal. All the rules in the world right now, I think we should spend some time ignoring them. Just sneak off into the sunset and ski the Ridge of Dreams. What are they gonna do? What are they gonna do to you because you got caught skiing? Are they gonna hang you? I don't think so. Are they gonna put you in jail? I doubt it. Is somebody gonna be jealous that you did it and they didn't because they were afraid to break the rules? Yep. Somebody's gonna say, you dog. You went out there and ignored it and got it anyway. Glad I'm not doing that for the first time. Ow! Squirrely as fuck. <laughs> well, just look at them. I mean, they're both pig headed men. I mean, and they're both um, passionate about what they believe and believe in what they believe passionately. They're going to have lovely, juicy conflicts. Well, here we go. Looks fine so far. Not much could get Zach off of the trajectory he was on, but that particular image, that seemed to hook him. So who knows what he might be throwing away, but who knows what he'll find. Ridge of Dreams, day one, Zach Giffen interview, take one, an audio file one, marker. Woo! Ah! <laughs> it's a real thing now. What's a real thing? The Ridge of Dreams, as far as I know, is a real thing. So this kind of legendary character, Sean Dog, was flying around in Alaska. He took one picture of this ridge, and it's been named the Ridge of Dreams. There's this incredible mountain range that no one has actually skied that is so far remote, and the challenges of getting there are so severe. And I said, what? And he showed me photos of it, and I was like, that's nasty. We should go there. Let's go get a spare tire before we're on the side of the road. road. We don't have everything figured out yet. We can't get guarantees on permits to even go to this place. Like this, so. So we're gonna basically just send out a good vibe, and hopefully that'll work out good. And then we're just gonna do it. We're gonna make the logistics happen. Building a toboggan right now. <laughs> okay. Here, all you have to do is hit the red hit record. Hit the red record. We're Zach and Zach. You are Zach. And you are Zach. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Zach Barrett has been my partner in crime. We have been the ski bum, ski buddies since our early 20s. You can drop here and I'll film it. Just go for it. I got you, dude. Does not Come on, look tell me that doesn't look good. The goal was always the same. Our goal was just bigger mountains and deeper snow, and we took two different routes to get there. Skiing has been my life. I shit on that. I've held jobs at the ski hill since I was in eighth grade. Ski patrol, terrain park, anything I could get my hands on to get a lift ticket and a place to stay. One more to hope. In comparison with Zach Barrett, I'm basically a jock. I always tried to work in the professional field. I tried to actually work with photographers and thought that that was gonna gain me access to these mountains, and, and really it did. Yeah, I've always wanted to be in ski films since I was a little kid, and I thought, why not have Zach and I be in a movie together? Yeah, rolled in basically on fumes. <laughs> so many people, they feel like they've had friendships that have kind of come and gone, and people change over the years. Well, for whatever reason, 
we haven't changed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to miss out on the unknown. There's a whole unknown world out there, and that's exciting. That's what's real. That's what's happening. And that's the dream. That's the rigid dream for us. It's about making sure that we don't let this life slip us by. Cool, you got a, you got a belt break on film. <laughs> Marker. Snap. Let's first start. Who you? Who are you? Oh yeah, I'm I'm Sean Dog. I live in Haynes, Alaska, and I own this fabulous company called Alaska Heli Skiing. How do you know Zach Giffen and Zach Barrett? I have not met Zach Barrett and Zach Giffen prior to this week. These guys showed up in my front yard here and uh, saw that I had a couple of helicopters, so I stuffed them in, and and now I think we're we're good buds. You got a, a theme for the interview, or any idea what you want me to? To touch on. Well, we're going to talk about the rigid dreams. Ah, yes, the rigid dreams. In their minds, it's a legend, you know? They have never seen it. They're just going on faith. And it's just one silly little iPhone picture, but you look at this photo and you and you just go, yeah, that's it. That's the ridge. That's the ridge of dreams because you could spend a lifetime there and never have to go anywhere else. There's a huge story around it in the last seven years and controversy and love, hate, fire, ice, everything's involved with this thing and it, it, it does exist. The Ridge of Dreams does exist and there's a picture to prove it. Oh yeah, here we go, man. <laughs> I've been a fisherman my whole life and I fly back and forth between here and the coast 10, 15 times a summer. Punch it. And on one of these flights... And now we're coming into Crazyville. The mountains just jack up around here. I was fortunate enough to look behind me. So how am I doing here, Sean Dog? Oh, hey guys, you can see the little piece of the Ridge of Dreams poking in right now. And there it was, this hidden gem in the middle of a vast expanse of ice. That's the rig. Oh, yeah, right. oh God. Look at those spines. An unbelievable, unbelievable mountain. And it seems to have spread this wildfire of desire. My dream became his dream, became that guy's dream, and pretty soon we had a dream tornado that turned into a dream storm about one thing that still in seven years has not been touched. What did I tell you, boys? Yeah, you were Every right, word was true. And you know, that's why we're all here, because of that one little silly photo I took from behind my back on the way to fish camp. It's on. All of my doubts are gone. It's as spectacular as I was ever hoping it could be. It really does have these elements skiers like myself and Zach have been searching for all our lives. We actually saw the Ridge of Dreams. It's real. It's a real place and we know where it is. And we're going there. <laughs> this scene is called <laughs> The Plan. Da, dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Take one, sound sync, marker. Here's the route that Zach and I found yesterday. So the snowmobiles would just rally from here get in, get to where the plane is, pick up all the stuff and you guys, and then bump camp from there. No cameras allowed here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is a good point. The main I mean, thing I would worry I'm about is like... I'm talking about the park service, like, finding out and getting super Maybe you guys should just have the conversation. Not on okay. camera. I mean, well, we're just trying to actually I figure know. it out. But yeah, let's, let's cut. Otherwise... Until, until this part of the comment yeah. <laughs> Where were we? Oh, yes. The biggest challenge in Skiing the Ridge of Dreams is, now that the area has been turned into a park, it's made more rules that make it harder to get in there uh, commercially. You know, we're trying to make a film here, so we need film permits. Uh, I mean, I think the permits are ridiculous. There's not exactly an agreement between what the best strategy to go about getting that permission is. It's hundreds of miles from any, like, borough or district or city or anything. And for me, I feel like getting permission is is totally paramount. Basically, whatever he's got going on, I'm not sure if he's 100% down with what we're doing anymore. Well, tomorrow, I'm actually leaving because I have this job in Atlanta. 
a commercial for which seems totally crazy, and it is crazy. That's basically what's happening, which is very unfortunate in multiple levels, but... That's what's gonna get us to the Ridge of Dreams, you know? We're just gonna do what it takes. I'm in the moment right now, the golden window, the whole thing, the whole nine yards, what you wait your whole life for to do. And at least for me right now, that means fly to Atlanta, and then I'm gonna be back. You don't wait a week or plan arbitrary dates or have imaginary boundaries get in your way from things like that. I honestly don't think it's out of reach to go out there. Honestly, like the Ridge of Dreams is right there. I just need to tell you guys what I believe in from now on. Zach needs to know what I believe in. We need to just, I have to, I'm going full belief status because now it's like almost a myth that we're even doing anything. And basically I can't handle that and I'm just gonna go send. So that's what I'm doing. Period. Or dot, dot, dot. Even though I had wanted to have like a real ski segment finally, I think that money and other things get in the way of dreams. And that's what's happening right now as he flies away. People waste their whole lives trying to do this stuff. It's not a good idea. Yeah, bud. Yeah, bud. Yeah, we need to just go shred. Just go shred it. Yeah. Yeah, for fun. That's what I'm saying. Fun. Shred for fun. Yeah. Yeah. How, how much trouble can you get in for having fun? Yeah, not much, right? God, I hope not. But the yeah. whole world is in trouble. You know, Baron, he's, he's a wild man. He's a wild Alaskan brother. And I can relate to his way of thinking, you know? My great-grandfather has a homestead in Alaska that he walked to in 1898. And so for me personally, I kind of vibe off of him and that's my main mentor, even though I never met the man. Jennifer, you are cuckoo crazy, little girl. <laughs> Look at that mom here, she is a lumber jill. <laughs> we are Alaskans. We view things with an Alaskan perspective. You yeah. should wear some tough pants so you don't skin up your knees. I like no pants. <laughs> Our view of the mountains is different. You know, we don't see limitations, we see opportunities. What is the Ridge of Dreams, Jennifer? Do it as a mountain. <laughs> to always be able to bank back and say, well, Grandpa walked 200 miles and didn't complain about it, I can do the same thing, has always been a great thing for my life. Okay, ready? One, two, three. I see life basically the same way that he did, which is that I want to roam the hills. Okay, awesome. AK Factor 5 in full effect. <laughs> oh my god, I would almost call it a complete red flag scenario. Possibly even a black flag. Arrgh. <laughs> That's more like it. We've exploded all of our shit. We've got oil for the snowmobiles, generators, cook sets, barbecue, pads, sleeping bags, skis, snowboards. Everybody's got their stuff dialed. We're feeling pretty stoked, but it's time to do something pretty soon because it's pretty overwhelming just chilling. And now the party begins. What do you think Zach's doing right now? Okay, so Zach's probably doing something that's like very boring and nerdy and geeky even. That's the most perfect nail I've ever seen, Woody. Awesome. Nailed it. Cut. Nailed, Nailed it. He's basically on a paper route trying to get money. So I've been a skier basically all my life. Um, and I started being a carpenter in order to facilitate all of that. And I started building tiny houses and it turned into this big thing. And I got hired onto a TV show. So that's cool, but it's still kind of weird that he's not here shredding pal. We could have been at Rigid Dreams today. This is all part of making it happen. And he's back in Alaska. I know he's, you know, basically threatening to go out there and hit it without me, which is so ridiculous to me because what I've done has enabled us to be able to do this. And he's like telling me like how old he feels. Like, I just don't understand. I can't identify with that lifestyle. My life is skiing and it's no different now. It's just that, you know, I find myself further and further from the mountains that I'm trying to get back to. It's you give him? Thank you. Cream, perfect. 
I live like the rich and famous, and I'm not rich or famous. Yeah, this is gonna burn pretty good. Fist bump? of wild abandon and living on the edge is getting harder for those of us who have that as an ideal. You know, I don't want to see the Ridge of Dreams lose its soul because it is the most soulful piece of mountain that I've ever seen. You know, everybody wants it so bad. And I think that the people that are going to get it are going to be the people that are doing it for the right reason. Not necessarily for profit, not necessarily for Anything other than the love of skiing and, and you know, the soul of it, hopefully. Doing Ridge of Dreams or the film or everything about it is what we always wanted that as kids. And then the money showed up and the pressure was on about film crews and cameras and you're not doing it for your actual dream. I just realized that I don't really care about being in a ski movie as much as I thought, and that it doesn't even matter, any of it. Take a dip in the river, like your grandpa did, you know? That's what I want with my life. I mean, in my mind, when I left, it was going to be two days, but really it was about four. And I guess I shouldn't be super surprised to come back and that Zach has like completely lost it. I have no idea. He probably was just, I don't know, freaking out at all times about getting out there. And I think our issues with permits and stuff, the fact that we haven't had our permit come through yet, we don't know if it's actually going to or not really puts into question whether or not we're, we should be so set on one location. And I feel like Zach Baird's not gonna wanna hear that. Right, Rigid Dreams. This scene is Zach's re-arrival news. Take one, audio sync, marker. Actually, I mean, I pretty much have good news and good news. Uh, basically, we're riding out today with your snowmobile and my snowmobile. Out to the Rigid Dreams today. Well, I mean, listen, like, yeah, we've been planning on this. We put so much into it. We're like kind of methodically going about making sure that this happens. And it's actually not a surprise to me that Zach just wants to go. That's what I do with my life. Like, it's like asking me to not be myself to do anything else. And you know that. So we're just going to say fuck it to film permits and... <laughs> That's not how we roll up here. This is north. North of permit areas. I never completely trust him to be anything other than himself. And so it all works as long as like, I'm not surprised by this shit. That's what makes it work. You know, when you have good friends, you have to accept all the aspects to them. You know, that's, that's why I love them and that's why I hate them. I mean, yeah, sure. I'd consider myself a rogue operator from time to time, but I pretty much know what I'm doing. I think for the most part, I mean, who knows? Nobody really knows anything much. I mean. All right, Zach, interview, final interview. You only get so many chances in this life to pull off something exceptional. One thing that I can tell you I've learned from Zach over the years is this thought that when the world tries to shut you down, you dig in your heels and there's always a loophole, there's always a way to make your dreams work out. The permit is only required if what we're trying to do is make a film. 
So if we're gonna go out there, we gotta leave. The camera's behind. Maybe the world is telling us that it's not about filming it. It's about doing it for yourself. I don't really think the dream has changed. I mean, the dream is about the experience. You know, I, I hate to be cliche about this, but you know, the, the whole goal and the... Hey, do you, you have know, a pot or pan or anything? No. Okay. The dream has shifted a little bit. But the dream was always pretty loose. Even the face of stupidity, you keep going. I think that's kind of where we're at. I said, are you really going to try to charge across the river with this? Oh, uh, yeah. Completely loaded. Yeah. If somebody is sleeping out there in uh, a wet sleeping bag, it won't be me. Okay. I guess there is a chance that we're, like, going to have a major, major problem and get out there and get stranded and get snowed on and get, you know, there's always that chance when you go into the mountains, especially if you're going on a major expedition. But, <sighs> yeah, you just don't know until you don't go. Wait, did I say that right? You don't know until you go. <laughs> and for him to ride off into the sunset is ignoring the constraints that keep you from actually achieving your dreams and living a life of freedom. I feel like Zach and I really are kind of one and the same. But we're almost like two sides of somebody's personality. And we have very different ideas about how to get somewhere, but we have very similar ideas about where it is that we're trying to go. Doggy snapping. That is the dream. Forget about the movie. Just sneak off into the sunset and ski the ridge of dreams. <laughs> Hopefully he's been inspired a little bit by what I've done and how I live. And uh, you know, maybe we're just pulling from each other's positives and or maybe we're just helping each other go down a wormhole of debauchery. One of the two. Not much could get Zach off of the trajectory he was on, but that particular image, that seemed to hook him. So, who knows what he might be throwing away, but who knows what I find. You dog. You went out there and ignored it and got it anyway. You can say, that's a wrap. That's a rad. That's a wrap. That's, that's a wrap. That's rad. That's a wrap. Here, you try it. That's a wrap. That, that's a wrap. <laughs> that's a wrap. <laughs> that's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs> that's a wrap. 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 That's a wrap.